so now the now we move on to uh, discussing about norms this is chapter 5 in the textbook so i can say that probably whatever we discussed so far is uh, loosely things you have already seen before um there's probably not too much new material that you have never heard of that i've covered so far uh but uh, from now on hopefully we will you'll get to see some new uh, new things um when we discuss these norms and its properties so what is the norm what is a norm a norm is simply a way to measure length um so we've already seen the euclidean norm which is given by if i get a take a vector z then z transpose z which is equal to uh, summation i equal to 1 to n z i square okay here it's um, implicitly assuming it's a real vector so the mod is not required so let me not confuse you i'll remove the mod here okay this is one way to measure the size of a matrix uh, of a vector uh, and i think the last time i alluded to this but there is a for example a simple generalization is i could i could define i'll just write a subscript a here and i can define the measure of a length to be equal to summation i equal to 1 to n ai times zi squared where ai's are some numbers greater than 0 for i equal to 1 to n so we'll see that uh, in just a few minutes we'll see that this is also a valid definition of the norm of a vector and uh, a question that we'll answer is that are there other generalizations and uh, uh, also how does one uh, extend this to somehow measure the size of a matrix so in general you know we humans are very fond of uh, associating numbers with everything and uh, so that once you associate a number with things you can even think about rank ordering uh things be based on that number that you're associating with uh, each of these quantities and so perhaps uh, you know that could be one way to think about why we are interested in norms is because it allows us to associate a number with uh, with different things so let me formally define a norm so let v be a vector space over a field f so for the purposes of this course think of it as either the real line or the complex plane then a function f um or not f we'll define it this way which maps from the vector space v to the real line is a vector norm if for all x y belonging to this vector space v it is true that 
the norm of x is greater than or equal to zero. Norm of x, uh, actually I'll call this one a. If and only if x equals zero to c times x norm is equal to mod c times the norm of x for every c belonging to f and the last one is the triangle inequality norm of x plus y this is the only place where y enters into the picture so this is called uh, this property is called the non negativity property and this property is called the positivity property this property is called the homogeneity property and this is the triangle inequality now couple of variations are that um, if the property 1a is not satisfied then it is called a semi norm and uh, if uh, the triangle inequality is not satisfied then it is called a pre norm so we'll refer to some of these uh, later when we want to state certain properties so for some properties it's enough if the norm that we are considering is a pre norm for some other properties uh, it's enough if it's a semi norm but for others it needs to be a norm so these are the four uh, things that uh, a function which maps a point in the vector space to the real line needs to satisfy for it to be considered a norm so essentially it's mapping to r plus the positive half of the real line so the first property is that if is a vector norm then norm x minus norm y in magnitude is less than or equal to the norm of x minus y for every x y in v you can see that this is uh, very similar to a triangle inequality so if i just want to illustrate this by a picture in two dimensions then if i have a vector x and another vector y then um, x minus y is actually this vector so let's change color this is x minus y then what it's saying is that the length of this vector is more than the difference between these two lengths so how do we show this it's very simple so what we do is um, we take y and we can write y to be equal to x plus y minus x so this means that if i take the norm of y if i take the norm both sides and then i apply triangle inequality this is less than or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y minus x so this means that 
if I take norm y minus norm x, that is less than or equal to the norm of y minus x, which is equal to the norm of x minus y. Because scaling by minus 1 will only scale the norm by the magnitude of minus 1, which is equal to 1. And similarly, whoops. Similarly, you can um, exchange x and y, and uh, um, uh, or you can write x to be equal to y plus x minus y. This exchange is x and y here, and that will give you that norm x minus norm y is less than or equal to norm of x minus y. So you see that this and this both are actually less than x minus y, which can be compactly written as norm x minus norm y is less than or equal to norm of x minus y. Okay, so, um, so earlier we looked at this thing called the usual inner product or the dot product where x, y was defined to be y transpose x or y Hermitian x for complex the complex case. So this is, a, I, I mentioned several times that this is a special case of uh, a definition of an inner product. The more general definition is like this. So let V be a vector space over F. Then um, this dot comma dot bracket, which maps from the Cartesian product of V with itself to the field F is an inner product. If for every x, y, and z belonging to this vector space V, uh, it is true that one, the inner product of x with itself is greater than or equal to zero, which is the same as our non negativity. And uh, second, which again I'll call 1a, x, x equals zero if and only if x equals zero, which is the positivity property. Linear in the first argument, x plus y z equals x z plus y z. This is also called the additivity property. And then there's a homogeneity property, Cx y equals Cxy. And the fourth property is that Xy is the complex conjugate of Yx. If you exchange the arguments, then uh, what you get is the complex conjugate of the inner product. So this is the formal definition of an inner product. Any function that maps V cross V to F is an inner product if it satisfies these five properties. Okay, so the reason why I brought up the uh, definition of the inner product is because there's a close connection between inner products and norms. And uh, uh, Here's the lemma that makes this connection. If is an is a vector in a product on V, on a vector space V, 
then the square root of the inner product of x with itself for any x is a vector norm on b So this means that if I define this to be a vector norm where the inner product has these these four properties, then I can show that this this notion of a vector norm satisfies the four properties I need in order for in order to define uh, a vector norm. And therefore it is a valid vector norm. Uh, I won't prove this here. So I'll leave it for you to look up in the text, but it's a straightforward proof. The proof, essentially, the only idea that the proof uses is uh, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, mainly to show this triangle that the triangle inequality holds. The other properties are trivial from the fact that this is a inner product and it comes from here itself. Um, but you need the triangle. You need to show the triangle inequality, for which uh, you need uh, uh, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Um, one other thing is that um, a norm divided from derived from so when you when we define a norm in this way we say that um, such a norm is derived from an inner product And uh, a norm divided from derived from an inner product, it satisfies what is called the parallelogram law. Which uh, norms that are not derived from an inner product, we'll see examples of that momentarily. Uh, they don't need to satisfy this. So the parallelogram law is that u plus v, if u and v are two vectors, then this norm squared plus norm of u minus v squared is equal to two times the norm of u squared plus the norm of v squared for every u v belonging to this vector space v. So if you, if you think of this as the inner product square, you can see that uh, when I take the inner product of u plus v with itself, I'll get the inner product of u with itself plus the inner product of v with itself plus two times the inner product of u with v. When I take the inner product of u minus v with itself, I'll get the inner, the, the norm of u square plus the norm of v squared minus two times the inner product between u and v. That is for the real case. For the complex case, you will get uh, something like uh, uh, um, u Hermitian v plus V Hermitian U, but you will get exactly the negative of that out here. So those two will cancel. And so all you're left with is two times norm U squared plus norm V squared. So if it's derived from an inner product, it's easy to see that the norm satisfies this parallelogram law. And it's called the parallelogram, parallelogram law because these, uh, these two terms are, if I construct a parallelogram from with U and V as the sides, Then if I complete this parallelogram, then this vector is u plus v and um, this vector is u minus v. And so what it's saying is that the lengths of the diagonals of the parallelogram squared if you add them up, that is equal to two times the lengths of the sides squared, the sum of the lengths of the sides. So this part is lengths squared of diagonals. And this part is uh, 
of the signs. Okay, so um, now the next thing I want to talk about is uh, various examples of vector norms. Um, since we are like really at the last uh, tail end of the class, I'll stop here and uh, continue with this uh, in the next class. Mm -hmm.